Night Conscious Creators. How y'all doing tonight? Sunday, 7 o'clock. 7 at 7 on Sunday. Your mini life coach session. Come on in. Let me pull it together for just a real quick minute here. How's everybody doing? I think that was Crutchville. Adrienne Crutchville, I think, was playing. I, mean, I can't remember this time, but anyway. We do not have any rights to the music, Facebook. We do not have any rights to the music. We just like it. We play it, and we love it, and we enjoy it. So we're taking, we're taking no credits for it. We have no rights to it. We're just enjoying it. So hopefully they'll let us keep our, keep our, keep our video going here. Anyway, hello, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm Jean Aaron, life coach spiritual teacher as well, a mentor. Uh, how's everybody doing? It's Sunday, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 7 at 7, 7 minutes or 7, 7 sometimes or so minutes, of not, not an hour, just 7 minutes or 17 minutes or 37 minutes. But anyway, we're going to be here for a little while tonight with your mini life coach session. It's kind of a spinoff. It's going to be a spinoff from our uh, Conscious Creators Toolbox uh, we had I had some calls over the week, and they, you know, they were talking about this authentic self. So we kind of, we kind of put a little spin on it because I uh, had some questions about it, and they kind of reflected. So I'm going to share some of the reflections from my clients' calls this week, or or folks that called me and kind of wanted to chat about the authentic self. So it's got to kind of be a little spin off. But we're going to talk about why we fear being our our authentic self. You know, why do we? Why is it such a chore to be? our real self, our true self, who we really are after we take off all the makeup and all the mask and all the names and titles and roles and, and you know, the, the stuff that we play, we pretend or we play at or these people put on us. So, you know, you know, how, why can't we just rip it all off and be who we are? So we're going to talk about, you know, the fear that surrounds being the authentic you because it takes a little bit of courage sometimes to, you know, to be you, especially when you're called to do crazy things and you wonder, well, you know, anyway, we'll get into it. But first I want to shout out. I want to, well, let me just say again, hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope your Sunday was good. It was kind of a beautiful day. Kind of a, kind of, oh, was kind of quiet around my place. I don't know how it was in uh, your neck of the world and, and your side of the world or wherever you are, but it's kind of quiet here. It's kind of a, kind of a dull kind of day. I was kind of in and out for a real quick minute, you know, not doing anything, just running back and forth to the car and doing, doing a few odds and ends in and out, but no, it was nice. It wasn't cold or anything. It was just kind of a quiet, dull kind of day. I don't know. People were probably out shopping or at home making a Christmas list or making some more masks or whatever, whatever we, whatever they were doing. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Whatever it was you were doing uh, today, and got some got some fun in over the weekend before the the week starts next week. It's, it's the holidays, so you know we kind of this is the time when you know if you're in the office, you get to. You know, kind of kick around a little bit, you know, spend a little a little bit longer, you know, on, on social media and, and messing around and at the water fountain chatting or whatever, you know. I, I remember those days, but, you know. But anyway, anyway, here we are on Sunday night. I want to shout out to a couple of folk, well, a few folk who have uh, kind of made my week in some way or another. And, and when I shout out to you, you'll probably, you'll probably re recognize what it is that you, what it is that you did to kind of, you know, make my week or help make my week. So I want to shout out to Tom Allenson. Allenson, I love that video, man. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep doing it. Daddy. Virginia. Oh, my goodness. The volunteer, the lady of the, the volunteer, the volunteer lady of the week. My neighbor. I love you, girl. And I want to shout out to Jai. Jai Jetson. Welcome back home. We're so glad you're back. And I, I can't wait to see you. Can't wait to see you. Charlie Mitchell. Do to do, brother. Linda Lyles. It's so glad to reconnect with you. I love it. I want to also shout out to Chameleon Whitmore, my little princess. Good to see you. Maggie Fickerwara Spun. Girl, how's the weather out there? Hmm. I'm thinking about coming. I don't know. But you know, with all this COVID stuff, I don't know if I can swing it or make it happen. But I'm going to try to make it happen sometime around the first of the year. Get out there and see, guys. I don't know if I get that far south, but you know, I'll be in Phoenix. I'll give you a shout out. I'd like to also shout out to Aaron Cuthbert. Well, yeah, boy, I haven't seen you this weekend. I th hope everything is going well with you. And uh, shout out to Wanda, Aaron, 
and Jay Moss and Donald Don. You all know who you are. And I also want to shout out to my little baby brother, Rome. I hope you're listening tonight because I got, I got a, a word that you could pass on. You can play it forward, okay? Uh, let's see. Oh, Caron Crawford, I don't know if you're listening, but if you're tuning in, I know you said you got it all in, a, in, your, in, in your back pocket and it's working for you, but I hope you can get something out that you can share with some folk too tonight. Anyway, shout out to you guys and who I did not shout out to you. I'm shouting out to all you conscious creators because I love you. I love your creativity. I love that you're aware and you're awake and you're you're uh, conscious and you're out there creating your realities and you're doing it well and you're happy about it. I like that. And you do it on purpose. You're making a list and checking it twice and you're not taking no for an answer and it's working. I'm proud of you. And anyway, if you ever need a co-creator, you know, I am always game to help. I love co-creating. I love helping making stuff happen, making it happen, manifesting, creating something that ain't never happened before. I like to do that too. It's kind of, it's a little bit more fun when you do it with somebody else, by the way. And just to be, just to make it perfectly clear, you can't do, you can't create anything or manifest anything alone. Not that it's going to last any time. So anyway, if you're looking for a co-creator, I'm game. I'm game for almost anything. So give me a shout if you need anybody to help you work stuff out and, and iron it out and have those awesome experiences and, you know, those things that you want to do. Anyway, so tonight, why are we afraid? Why, why do we fear being the being true to who we are, being our authentic self? I'm going to spend probably about 15, 20 minutes. Hopefully it won't be any longer than 30 at the most. But anyway, I wanted to just, just kind of talk a little bit about why you fear, why we fear being authentic and be the real and showing it and demonstrating and, and acting and just being who we really are way down deep inside uh, after we take off every, uh, you know, take off the, the pretense and the, and the wannabes and the could have beens and all that. Why do we fear? And, and, and we do, some of us do. And probably all of us do at some point in time. You know, it takes, a, it takes a little bit of experience and a little bit of oomph, oomph, oomph to really just do it all the time and to be that authentic person. There are people that do it, you know. I, you know, I, I may stumble on being authentic every now and again. You probably do too. But, you know, some things just kind of knock us off, the, off our game sometime with, with that really getting down to the nitty gritty of, of discovering who we are and really knowing who we are. Because once we, usually once we have a passion about something or a passion about our lives or we have a call on our lives, and I know a lot of people that who have, you know, specific calls on their lives. And we all have calls, but, you know, some of us recognize it and honor it a little bit more often and frequently and, 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 and in ways that other people, you know, just may not, you know, just, you know, kind of take it, take it slow. But, um, but we, sometimes we do get a little bit afraid, a little bit apprehensive about stepping out there and really showing the world and showing folk who we really are. So if you have a fear of that, if, you have, if you're afraid of that, I'm hoping that I'm going to say something tonight to kind of stir up a little opportunity for you to reflect and think about it and maybe put a few little, tweak a little bit and, and, and put, you know, trying to put your foot back out there again and let's try it again. You know, sometimes we are, we get, basically we get overly concerned about what other people are thinking or what they think of us until we kind of we kind of get 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 kind of preoccupied with how what you think of me or what you're thinking of me or you know evaluating and, and judging and, and looking at what I'm doing we get we get overly concerned about that and we get so concerned about it that it forces us sometimes to draw draw back and to withhold or or to act act in a in, in a totally different way and we really have to, we really have really an unrealistic, in my opinion, and I, I'm guilty, I'm guilty too, from preaching to the choir, and I'm one of the, I sing, not real well, but I sing. Um, we really have an unrealistic need for people to like us, for everybody to like us. We really want everybody to like us. But the fact of the matter is, everybody's not going to like me. Everybody's not going to like me. No fault of mine, I promise you, because I'm just grand and great. But they may not like my grand and great. They may not like the way I, you know, wear my hair. Or they may not like the fact that, you know, she, you know, she should have contacts on instead of those glasses. Or I don't like the way she talks, you know, or she talks too fast or whatever. You know, there's going to be something about me that people are just not going to like. No matter what I do, no matter if I try to take those voice lessons and, 
and slow it down a little bit or whatever, they're going to find a reason just not to like me or not to like something I do or something I say. So the, tr the fact is, when we have that unrealistic expectation or even desire or want for people to like us, then we're going to stumble. We're going to stumble because that is just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Everybody is not going to like you. I mean, they might like you. Everybody might like you some of the time, or some of the people may like you none of the time. But you know, everybody all of the time is not going to like you or me or her or him or them. We just said it's not going to happen. So what happens in that is we try, we, we, it, but, you know, we, we get, get to, mm, just like I said, drawing back because we have this, un this unrealistic expectation. I think that if we, if we just get to a place where we could understand that people have a choice. I mean, they can choose who they like. They can choose who they want to be bothered with, spend time with, and it might not be me, you know? And, you know, it might make me sad because I might want to, you know, hang out with you, but you don't want to hang out with me. But, you know, I, you know I'll get over it. I'm okay, you know. I want, I'm going to survive it, you know. I'm not going to have this anxiety thing or, or you know, just kind of go whatever. But we do sometimes. It affects what we, it affects us being ourselves when we really want that person or those people to, to like us and to want to be bothered with us, if you would. But let's just be real. You know, maybe they're just not, it's not going to happen. So my suggestion is to understand that and to understand, to give that person or the people or whoever the freedom of choice to choose whether they want to be bothered with me or you or, or them or not. And just, you know, be done with it like that. You know, working with my clients, and I said that really the reason that I'm kind of talking about this tonight a little bit is because in talking to my clients this week, this past week or, or so, They've been talking about, you know, I've been catching that, you know, you're talking an authentic, authentic uh, person, you know, being authentic and, and trying to be real. But, you know, it's kind of it's not always easy to be that way. And, I, you know, and I said, yeah. And then and in talking about it, I, I kind of start listening and I started hearing that one of the reasons is that we are overly concerned and, over, and preoccupied with what people think about us and, and how they whether they like us or not. And that can have that has a big effect on it, but the, un, the underlying reason, or the underlying cause of that, um, wanting to be liked and wanting to be accepted, and 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 really drawing back when you're not, and 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 it bothering you, and it it's affecting you being who you are, and 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 asking for, and doing, and going, and just being who you need to be, who you want to be, who you who you are are designed to be. You know, it it helps, it causes us to to feel rejected or unworthy or just afraid that you're going to say the wrong thing or you want to you want to put your best foot out there and and you know this is you know this is what this person is expecting and if I say this just just right maybe you know maybe they'll accept it or they'll they'll like what they hear or they like what I say or like me you know but again you know if you draw back in saying and asking for the things that you want because you've already received, already answered yourself. You've got, you've, you've asked and answered your question yourself or the request of yourself before you even presented it to the person. Then, you know, you've, do, you, you've done yourself a total dis, dis, disservice, really just total, total disservice from, right from the jump. The least you could do is you could, could just go on and present the question or present yourself or be you. And just see where they fall, you know, where, you know, where the chips may fall, you know, I mean, you may make a hit, you know, maybe a, you, may, you may strike, you know, strike oil that day or, or have a home run or whatever, you know, you, know, you may win them over. But, but, but if you be apprehensive because of fear that you will be rejected or fear that maybe, you know, maybe what I'm really asking for, maybe they'll think that I'm needy or that I'm weak or that I'm leaving my, you know, I'm just... I'm, I'm, just, I'm asking for too much or, or whatever I'm asking or saying, maybe, maybe it sounds silly or maybe it sounds, makes me sound stupid or you know, like, like I am needy, like maybe I'm needy rather than, you know, this strong person that I want to project myself to be. Well, <laughs> vulnerability has a bad rap in my opinion. 
in my opinion, has a bad rap. You know, people think, think that being vulnerable makes you weak or it looks, like, like, it looks like a weakness. But I tell you, honestly, think about it. Think about it rationally. To be able to put yourself out there, to put yourself out there, is that weak? I mean, to overcome the fear and, and, the, and the idea of being rejected and feeling stupid or feeling silly or feeling different or feeling like the oddball out and to go on and do it in spite of that, that's not weak by any means. That takes a lot of guts. That takes a lot of nerves to, to just step out and do and be and say without even, you know, not even worried about what the other person is thinking or how, how they're even going to accept it or not accept it or answer or respond to it or judge it. Totally, you know, that takes a lot of guts and it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of nerve and a lot of courage and a lot of strength. So <laughs> vulnerability, if you're sitting here and sitting there or wherever and you're drawing back because you, you're feeling like if I do this and putting myself out there, I'm going to look weak. Baby, you're telling you, you know, stop listening to that chatter, chatter in your in your inner that inner talk that you hear in your your ears or your mind when you're you're trying to overcome something or or, or step out and something is drawing you back. Shut that ego off because <laughs> I don't know. I don't even understand why ego feels like it's gonna be hurt because you know the first thing ego will to do anyway is just you know die take a deep dive when you after you step out. So it's, hey, it's, you know he's gonna be safe, but that's ego for you. Ego is going to try to talk you out of it, you know, not to save himself, but to really think he's saving you, you know. So don't ever, ever feel like vulnerability is a weakness because it is not. It is not a weakness at all, period. What I do want to say, though, what I do want to kind of point out that the, just the underlying reason that we are overly concerned about what people think and, and it helps, it makes us draw back rather than step forward. Um, it, it's a, you know, sometimes we feel, we'll feel unworthy or we'll feel like being different makes us the oddball or silly or somebody, they're gonna laugh about it or, or judge us in a, in a certain way. But I mean, I'm here to tell you that different, different is cool in my book. Different, I mean, I've always been different. I've always been. I've always kind of been the oddball, you know, the person that was odd. Um, I was, I remember all the crazy names that they used to call me growing up, you know. Kind of, I mean, just really funny names. And, you know, and I, and I, I would think about them at times and I would tell my, you know, go home and talk, you know, kind of be upset and tell my mom or my grandmother. And, you know, of course they would, you know, help me get over it, you know. But, you know, I think about, I think about all those things that, all those little names and little and some of them were like pet names or whatever they would call you. But now I think about it, I said, wow, you know, I remember I was tall and skinny and they used to call me skinny. Well, you know, you know, a couple of about about two summers ago when I was leaving, uh, leaving uh, the, the uh, a group of uh, we were having a little fellowship at, at our community center over here and I was leaving and I, and I kind of stopped out, stopped and was talking to one of the seniors in the, in the neighborhood. And, and um, she said she looked at me and she said, Jean. Um, when does your baby do? And I said, my baby do? And she said, are, are you, when, when are you do? Are you, I said, no, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> I'm a grandmother. I'm not pregnant. You know, but then because I had gained weight, okay, so then I think, I think about that and I think, you know, I would like being skinny again. You know, I like that name. I used to hate it growing up, but I like it. So, you know, just kind of, you know, think, you know, just flip the switch. Be comfortable. Sometimes those pet names they give you, one of these days you're going to appreciate them, I promise you. You know, I, I, I really wish that I was skinny that day that the lady was asking me about, never mind. But anyway, <laughs> people that know me know that that really ruined my life for a while there. But just understand that how what people think of you is, it's really, you know, it's, in, it's their thing. It's not your thing. You don't, you don't have to buy it. It's not your, it's not your, um, I mean, you can wear it if you want to. But, you know, if it's something that, you know, that's, not serving, it's not serving the, the purpose at the time or, or serving you generally speaking, then you can dismiss it and that's on them. And it's okay. And you know, that's okay. You, you know, uh, you have the choice and the, to like or dislike and, and that's okay. And I'm, 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 I'm cool with it. I'm down with it as the kids would say. So vulnerability 
feeling that you're odd and different, um, being, uh, being apprehensive about uh, wondering whether you're gonna, how you're going to look to the person because you're, you do this or say this or, or you act this way or you be this way. You just lay that all down. Um, you do unravel it. In, in other words, when, you, when your mind or your, 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 you start talking to yourself and try to talk yourself out of something, just stop it. Just stop it in first, because if you if you if it's in your heart and in your desire to to want this and to desire it, who outside of yourself has the right to tell you whether you're silly in, in wanting it? So be silly, or you're odd in doing it. Be odd, or you're you're looking weak. Well, that's your opinion, you know. Because I'm telling you that it took me, you know two weeks to build up the nerve to do what I'm doing and I'm doing it. So, you know, that's, I'm, hey, I, I've, I've overcome. I'm an overcomer. So that's, you know, that's all that is on them. And then you, just like they have a free choice to choose to like you or dislike you and what, for whatever reason, you have the right to do and be whatever it is that you choose to be and do. It's just, I mean, that's just the way it is, okay? That's just the way it is. I, you know, sometimes it's, it's really difficult, I guess it's sometimes, well, I know it is, it's sometimes it's very difficult to kind of push against the feeling that we have about, you know, the fear of feeling, the, the fear feeling of, of, of going on and doing something. But I, I will promise you, being a, a conscious creator that you are, and again, you are, if you overcome that fear just by, you know, just, you know, just tweak it a little bit at a time and, and, and until you get to the place where you can step out and you can do and you can be those things and, and ask for and request and, and just be what you want to be. Do what, do the real you. Go in and be the real you and, and just forget those folk that think it's odd. Odd is, odd is in style in my opinion. It will always be in style. An authentic person, let me tell you about an authentic person. Authentic person is going to always look odd. A, real, a person that's being real is going to always look odd because a real person is not going with the flow. They don't go with the flow. The going with the flow looks pretty normal and it looks like everybody else. But a, a, an authentic person, a real, the real you, is going to go by their, the drummer that they hear. That, that, the, 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 the tune from their heart. My tune is my tune and your tune is yours. It is, and it's totally different. My real is me, and your real is you. His real is his, her real is hers. So if we're all going with the flow, <laughs> then we're all doing the same thing and everybody can't, I mean, every, everybody can't have the same real is what I'm saying basically, okay? My real is mine and yours is yours. So, Authentic people stand out. Authentic people are odd. Authentic people are very odd. <laughs> I don't know an, a, a person that I would consider authentic that I would say, there's a little bit of weird in them. There's a little bit of odd in them. There's a little bit of, hmm, you know? And that is because when, we, when, when you're, uh, for instance, I know that for me, I really have to talk, talk myself off the ledge sometimes to even just get out and, and just deliver a message because when when a spirit gives me a message to give sometimes it's like I can't say that they're gonna think what are you doing they're gonna they're gonna think I'm crazy if I say it like that so you know honestly sometimes I'm gonna tell you sometimes I tweak it I'm saying that spirit knows I do sometimes I tweak it or sometimes I just gotta leave that part out you know because I you know I, I don't you know I don't want to look you know too weird here but you know the, the but the fact is if it's given to me to give, if it's given to me to give by spirit or, or come from my heart or whatever, then if it comes from a real place, it's got to be something that would benefit somebody. Even if it doesn't, even if it's not for me, if it's not to benefit me, for it to come out from the depths of me, from, on, from my higher self, because what comes from my higher self is for the good of not just me, it's for the good of all. It's for, the, it's for the higher good of all of us. So when we hold back being the authentic person that higher, our higher, good, our higher person, 
our, our God or our creator gives us to present to the world or to each other or to our families or to friends, then we need to we need do that. We need to go on and present and, and, and say and share and, and be and, and have those connections and those relationships and those experience with, experiences with each other and, and express, each, express to each other what our higher self says that we should express. Okay? If we are listening to our higher self and we are following it from our hearts and from that, that point, that higher point, then we can't help but be that authentic, creative being that we were designed to be. And it's going to look, it's not always going to look like everybody else or look like you think it should look because we, we know, we only see, we like my grandma used to say, we, you know, we're down here, we see just the, you know, just a certain, certain amount of space we can see. But if we're talking from, we're connected to the, the higher, our higher self, our higher power, then that power sees the, the connection of all of us. Those that we will inter, interact with, we have experiences with, relate to, connect with, even those that just our connections themselves, may, we may never touch their lives physically, but what we do could affect their lives. So doing, connect, being connected and do, being that authentic you, it gives you an opportunity to affect the good in the world, to bring some good in the world. It, 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 it's an, an opportunity to use that creative ability and those creative, creative powers that we have. And that's really authentic. Authentic people are creative, innovative people. They do, they blaze trails that others don't <laughs> have an apprehension about or a fear about or just, you know, don't want to do, you know. I'm just not, not I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to be odd. I'm not going to be strange. I'm not going to have people, you know, looking at me like I'm, you know, got two heads or whatever. But an authentic person could care less. Oh, you see two heads? Okay. Let me say, do, they, do, do, what, do you need the hair, hair cut on this one? What's going on? But and I, just be, be real. Be who you are were created to be. Do the things that you were created to do. If you were called to, to step out there and, and, to, and to speak or to sing or write that song or to you know, choreograph that dance thing or to teach that, those kids or, or help, the, help your neighbor, whatever it is that you were called to do from your higher self, do it and do it without absolutely no concern with an evaluation or judgment by me or anybody else just walking on this face of this earth. Your judge, your, your only judge in that case should be the higher power because that's who, gave it, that's who gave it to you to do. That's where it came from. It came from the depths of you, the higher self. And if anybody judges, it should be that judge and not me or them or her or him. So step out, be vulnerable. Darn it, be vulnerable, be odd, be different. It's quite okay because it's, if you're going to be authentic, you're going to be different. You're just going to be different. And every authentic person you know, you look at them. You look at them and you tell me that they're, they ain't a little bit odd, okay? So don't be afraid to be different. Don't be afraid to use your creative abilities, your creative powers to be innovative, to trailblaze. Because even though you might feel like you're stepping out there by yourself, I guarantee you, head on down the road, look back. You're going to have a whole trail of folk following you. I promise you. All right? That's all I have for you tonight. Stop being scared to be real. Stop being afraid to be real. Just be real. Just be real. The hell with it, okay? The hell with the rest of it. Just be real. I love you guys, and I will see you on Thursday night. We're going to continue with the authentic self. We're going to be talking about self-reflection on Thursday, on this Thursday, and talking a little bit about how, how, we, how we look at ourselves and, and, and how we do the self-talking and, and, and what we need to do with that and how we need to use that to manifest and create the realities that we were destined to, to, destined to create, okay? I love you guys, and I will see you on Thursday. If not on Thursday, hopefully next Sunday. Take care. Have a wonderful week. Manifest best. I love you guys.